what's going on guys how we doing out there welcome back tgif made it through yet another week what are you guys up to what is going on uh not not much here uh, i'm actually gonna kind of pick up where i left off on wednesday um yeah i was kind of working on some other stuff in the meantime so kind of starting off where things wrapped up on wednesday Specifically, we're if you remember, I was trying to uh, start doing stuff for the ape in the jungle and adding vines. So I got part of the way through that, and I'll give you a quick little rundown here. There we go. So you see we got the vines. Hold on, let me get this ape out of my way. Otherwise, he's going to torment me and screw me up. And he's not... He's not acknowledging the vines yet, so there's no reason to keep him hanging around when he's... Ow, but uh, I can just damage myself, too. All right. So here's the concept that I got for the vines, right? So they're basically... You can see them kind of hanging out on the ends of these things, and it just, you know, kind of come upward, um, and then they be a little tie-off, and then kind of recycling these, but I think it doesn't scream danger since they're not pulsing and there's no giant scary spikes on them. So hopefully that just sort of conveys that they're climbing vines. Uh, one of the things that happened right from the beginning was I couldn't go through it because I was using it as platform. And, of course, it treats it as a collider, right? So, I mean, I was, like, literally hitting this as a barrier. And that's when I discovered something about uh, Unity's 2D tile map stuff. Um, it is impossible to have a image on a tile map and not have at least some collider on it. Um, I tried to do that where I just sort of like I generated it and cleaned it out and it would just come back and make its own So what I ended up having to do was uh, Take all the vine stuff here and throw that into a secondary uh, Additional layer so not really kind of what I wanted to do, you know adding a whole nother uh, 2d tile map layer to the whole setup, but kind of the only choice and you can see I'm hitting right now just because I need to clean up the uh, the colliders on the physics here which I'll do here in just a second uh, and you'll notice too the fact that I have this gap and that's because in the uh, tile map these two coincide so I'm gonna have to make a special tile as an option that could have like both of them visible at the same time but um, and then this one I'm gonna change this too so I can have it where it kind of comes down and just sort of like goes into the uh you know just connects with this guy so i think that looked pretty cool it'll come down and it just it'll look tied to it in terms of timing though um what i'm going to try and do is shoot for the same kind of timing that we have here right so when he jumps down right there so that jump down motion you know I mean, you can just picture him kind of sliding right and then you know the climb up will be pretty fast um Similar to what you see him doing here. Whoops, and I got a collider that keeps throwing him way up in the air. Yeah, so right now he does that that arcing jump, right? So instead, it's just going to be sort of like a linear doo -doo 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 -doo, climbing up the the vine, right? But that's what you know. This is going to be a whole new set of animations, but I don't think I'll get the animation today. Uh, what I'm going to be focusing on is setting up the vine stuff and then starting to play with the colliders like I was talking about before. I was thinking about doing raycast, but because he's not moving that fast, I might be able to get away with having just a box collider that uh, attached to the ape that knows when he slid off of or reached the edge of a platform, right? And then processes what he should do next in terms of his next move. So I think I can do that rather than uh, I'm just I'm trying to stay away from doing too many raycasts. Uh, you know the player already has a ton, so I'd like to try and you know steer clear of that as much as possible. Uh, but before I get to that, I need to uh, correct all the stuff on the vines. So let me <laughs> play playing merry-go-round with this guy. Oh, you're gonna come up this way now? Okay, come here, buddy. Let's make you go away. There you go. All right. So, uh, so this one looks, yeah, I lost my cursor. So this one looks pretty good. It looks like it's actually off by one pixel. I'm going to move that up in Photoshop. Uh, this one actually is rock solid to begin with. And that's cool. So what I've done is just the edge pieces. I've Photoshopped together a version where the stump is kind of sticking out. Uh, here you can see, I don't have a version of this yet. So right now it kind of just, I'm using this one and you see it doesn't connect correctly, but I'll be addressing that here in just a minute. 
So that's going to be the game plan today. Uh, try and focus on getting all the Vine stuff set up, getting all that integrated nicely, and if that's behaving, then I'll start worrying about trying to do the uh, collider stuff for the apes. So there you go. That is the game plan. That's what I'm going to be playing with here. Do I have tunes? Yeah, just a little soft right there. Okay. So let's jump in. Um, let's bounce back over to Photoshop. Yep. All right. So um, this guy. Let me see what I can do here. Yeah, okay. So uh, see, now the problem, I, I got to move him up one. But in doing so, that's going to move the vines with it. So that's not what we want. So let's go back into here. There you go. And this guy. So we want to move him and him. Oh, it's all one piece now. I, I had it separate before, but I forgot I unified it. So there. That's all I need is just a, a one little step up. But Photoshop being Photoshop, I if I grab this, it's going to do offset. Um, you know, it's not that bad. Before, I was painting the corners to make sure that I could lock it in to the proper space in the grid. But because I have an earlier reference, I'll be fine. So I'll tell you what. Let's just go ahead and momentarily flatten this. Merge visible. Copy. And then unmerge because I don't want to ever screw that up and save that by accident. Excuse me. All right. So, yeah, I should be able to just reference the vine there. There he goes. See? So the vines lined up perfectly, and you can see the stump moves up by one space. And we'll clone that. And I guess we gotta move it over. He's on top. It's from horizontal. Alright, same thing. Yep. Yep. Looks like we're in good shape there. There we go. Now these guys can go away. I guess I can just delete them out, right? Bring this back up. All right, and let's check this. Our uh, proverbial low-hanging fruit. Let's see if we got this set up correctly. Throw it back into images, jungle, and there's our tile set. Say OK. Done. All right. Bounce back over here. It's updating. There it goes. All right. Let's see if that one little pixel move got us all lined up correct. Yep. Looks. Yep. Looks pretty good. Yeah. To be honest, maybe even I could go maybe one more. It's hard to tell. Ow. <laughs> Jerk. I mean, it's a bit of a nitpick kind of thing, but since I'm working on it, it's not a terrible idea to try and maybe straighten it up right now. Yeah, let's do it. So. Yeah. Move on. One more. All right. That should be golden. So do our trick. Merge visible. Grab it. Unmerge. Throw it back in. Like so. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Flip him. Let's get him on top here. All right. Good. Yeah. There. Save. And let's kick out the PNG. Toss it back over into Unity. Jungle. Right there. Wait. 
wait for it. It's thinking. There we go. Alright. Hopefully this one's perfect and I'll stop tweaking. Yep. Seamless. That's it. Alright. Only one pixel. But it's truly seamless now. So that takes care of that guy. Let's go ahead and deal with the... <laughs> <laughs> the, the colliders that are completely foobarred at the moment. Let's deal with that so I can actually move through it. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's go in here. Sprite Editor. So this is what I was talking about before. was the fact that... Um, so, I, obviously the vines, I don't want any colliders on them, right? So, if you look at it, and you have to do something, right? So if you kick it over in a uh, custom physics shapes, you see there's... You know, there's nothing there, uh, nothing that I've generated, right? So traditionally, what I always do is I start off with a generate, right? And then what I was trying to do is just kind of go, yeah, I don't want this. So there you go, there. But in doing so, that just makes it revert back to, oh, you have nothing there, so I'll automatically build it myself. And it builds that kind of cube shape around it, which negates it. So I realized that I cannot use these guys on my foreground layer. I had to create a, a, an additional tile map uh, that I just called tile map vines, right? So this one I can still leave, right? But I need to fix the uh, the physics on him for sure. Um, and this guy should be, let me double check this. Let me tell you what, let me kick in uh, uh, revert. I didn't change anything there. I'm going to take a look at the colliders to make sure that I am doing what I think I'm doing. I got negative 33 because I was playing with the... Uh, let's see. Do I still have the ability to shoot? Did I take that back out? Yeah, I took that back out of the code. Oh, no. I still have... <laughs> I still have infinite firing ability. Definitely need to remove that before I ship, right? <laughs> okay. There we go. So yeah, here's what here's the issue right here, right? So let me check what I got going on for a traditional piece here. If I add him, there you go. So yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to replicate that one, and you see that. And then it's. Tile maps do a weird thing, right? Uh, in terms of like collision. So I don't know if you saw a couple times where I would hit here and it would just ricochet off and like a, almost like a, a spring loaded platform that would shoot them up in the air. So the only way around that seems to be if it's thick enough, then it kind of avoids that concept. Not ideal, but gets the job done. All right, so we're good there. So let's go ahead and actually modify this. Um. Let's go in here and we can reference this. Let's go into our there. So here, let's see. Oh, it's twenty. All right, so it's twenty there. And we'll guesstimate 20 there. Okay. <laughs> See, and here we go with the issue again, too. Uh, I've been using Maya a lot, right? So uh, to scrub around, it's Alt, Middle Mouse, right? Unity, it's no Alt, Middle Mouse. So if, if like here, I'm trying to, to scrub and it's not moving, it's because, oh, I'm in Maya land. Let me let go of the Alt and, hey, now I can scrub. I hate that, man. I hate when hotkeys are like that close. They do the same task, but they're slightly different because you always screw it up. All right. So let's count this down. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. God, I wish there was something in here. I, I wish Unity would add something with like uh, <laughs> Just some values here that would make this go so much faster. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So I'm going to guess that's correct. Now down here, 
I'm going to ballpark that. And then this one. And it might be right. If we get it close, we can adjust it. Oh, jerk. Move. It's still off. Seriously, dude? No, I'm not trying to do a bounding box. I'm trying to move your stupid butt. All right. There he goes. All right. And then we came in a bit. I'm going to just arbitrarily mark it there. We'll figure that out later. Yeah. Apply and let's go with that. Let's see what that does for us. All right. You know what? I don't need to be full screen. I just need to see what this looks like. All right. So the good news is up here we got that perfect. We did hit that right. Down below, we're off. Let's see what it is. One, two, three, to be exact. Which is cool because we don't really do the underside much anyways. So I can at least test this, but... Yeah, smooth as silk. Look at that. Yep, but not that one yet. Okay, we gotta do the same for all those. But at least for that. Wish. Good. So he's looking perfect. Look at that. That's that's nice and smooth. So that's knocked out. So let's go ahead and get this guy fixed as well. Oh, and we're gonna move the uh, the bottom side down three, don't we? So let's do that first. So we go one, two, three. Three and oh, let's do the other side. Yep, that's perfect. I'll apply. It's gonna think for twenty minutes. Come on. Let's see. Okay, I got this way extended down. I, I guess I, I kept cheating this down because that issue I was talking about—the springboard effect, right? If that that collider is just too narrow. It just launches them. So I, I guess I kept going further and further down. So let's see how far up that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. About 12. Doesn't have to be exact, I think. Just in the neighborhood would be good. So, once again, I wish I had coordinates right now. This would make life so much more pleasant. If I just had XY coordinates right now, so I could just zoom up to the right one. But instead, you got to go 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and let's get him lined up again, like so. All right. Same here. Let's see, and I can try and do it by the boxes here. Yeah. eyeballing it okay so that's takes care of that one we got to do this bad boy down here so this is talking about where we're basically going to sort of like negate this entire top section here and uh oh i guess i didn't have any physics at all there you go so one two three It doesn't help that it also has that little ghosting kind of new effect as well, right? Just to really make it confusing. You know, so even if you're trying to count, you know, sometimes you get like a double count just because of that stupid thing. Okay. And we'll do the same over here. Generate. Line this up. It may not be exact, but at least if we're in the neighborhood, it'll make it easier just to do the final tweak and get it perfectly lined up. But I mean, this is, 
a pretty quick trial and error kind of method. It'd be nicer to have something a little more robust, but this still works okay. Except for the fact that every time I tested it, I got this stupid ape trying to kick my butt. So let's close that. Let's try this again. So first, let's get the ape out of our hair. I guess I can like click it and there he goes. And just hide him, but I don't know. This is more gratifying. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Yeah, okay, looks pretty smooth. No hitch. Let's double check. Let's bounce up to where I am. Right here. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're solid. Tell you what, let's take that out for a second. Let's move me out of the way. Oh, nope, nope close it's one pixel off which should be okay most of the time but i don't want to hey, hey Vinny, what up buddy welcome back man how's life in your neck of the woods how you doing man got any big plans for the weekend oh sweet that one's perfectly lined up all right so let's get this one tweaked the one frame up uh, I'm here just to fulfill my duty of uh, taking that first place. <laughs> uh, well, shark bait is nowhere to be found at the moment, so you know the slate is clean. So go for it, man. Do a massive run. I did it on Wednesday and and basically had like three misses in a row, which was just pathetic. So jump in there, man. Good start there. Let's see. All right. So let's fix this. Let's go into custom physics. Just one pixel, one ping. Apply. Cool. All right. So what I'm doing is, uh, let's see, uh, this weekend I, just, I plan just to finish the uh, fifth season of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> they, um, so yeah, you, I guess you've probably already gone through the hour longs, right? And that was something that was kind of funky back in the, in the day. And uh, Rod Sterling was really not happy with it because as he said, Twilight Zone, the idea is it's 30 minutes. You, you create the setup. You have the build, and then you have the payoff, and you're done, and you move on, right? Um, pushing it to an hour-long episode just felt kind of bloated, you know, and uh, there's still some fun stuff in there, but, you know, it's, it's better when it finishes off at the half hour, but um, I'm trying to remember some of the season five stuff that sticks out in particular, but anyways, yeah, happy watching, man. Happy watching. I wish there was like you know, like a Men in Black kind of thing where I could like you know blank the brain. Uh, yeah, those were a little stretch. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean that's uh, a, a modern day example is uh, I thought um, I talked about this before, but uh, Ex Machina, right? The uh, the the feature film, and then also the the series of devs created by the same guy. Uh, Ex Machina would have worked great as a twenty minute short film, but as a ninety minute film, it felt really stretched thin uh and then devs was a fun uh short kind of i think it's like six episodes something like that but it it really works would have worked better as a two-hour feature film you know so i i hate that right i nothing bugs me more than you know the idea is like well we have this idea for a story but we don't want to expand it so we'll just go ahead and pad it you know yeah, yeah, big pet peeve of mine. Oh, there you go. One miss, one cash. But uh, yeah, that's cool. I would love to be able to reset the brain and just go back and watch Twilight Zone fresh for the first time. Uh, I got them all on DVD, but it's they're also on Netflix, and the transfers are really good too, by the way. The, the quality of them is fantastic. Um, okay, so... Yep, that one's rock solid now. All right. Excuse me, let me double check it. Whoa. 
What? Oh, uh, what, that the transfers are good or what, that they're on Netflix? I think it's Netflix, isn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, at least it is here in the U.S. Sorry if I'm bumming you out here, but uh, Netflix, let's see. Pretty sure. Netflix browse. Unless they took it off. Yeah. We got Twilight Zone, man. Oh, did I just click an episode? I did. Oh, the trouble with Templeton. <laughs> so, yeah, we actually have... Uh... There you go. And I love it. They're showing Nightmare 10,000 Feet right there, right from the get-go. Oh, I love it. What do you got in Season 5? Oh, look at that. Season 4 is missing. That's interesting. The... Oh, because I think they changed networks. You got you can check me if I'm wrong, but I think it was like it, it, CBS and it went over like ABC is one hour and then came back to CBS, I think. But uh, we also had that that time where they started shooting video too to save money. So there's a couple of episodes, Night of the Meek, I think was one of the the video era where they were trying to save cash, and it has that kind of soap opera look to it because they they realized if we shoot in video, so oh yeah, Nightmares is season five, um, and Praise a Pip, oh Bill Mooney, right, and Jack Klugman, ah. Oh. Fantastic. Uh, Steel, which got remade as a feature film with Wolverine a few years back. Uh, I kind of stopped watching. Yeah. The Last Night of the Jockey. That was like my first time I was introduced to... Uh, oh, shoot. What's his face? I was surprised to see a French movie in between. Oh, the, the current song, Owl Creek Bridge? Is that what you're talking about? So the story to that, if you, if you care, I don't know if you've heard, but the idea was uh, that they were way over budget, right? And they were trying to just finish the season, and they found the uh, the, the 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 story, the occurrence at Alcreek Ridge has been around for forever. I actually read it in elementary school. And if you think about the plot, that's kind of a twisted thing to show to an elementary kid. But um, so they found it at a film festival, right? So they actually bought the rights and were able to keep the show on budget by just pilfering that and showing it. So it is a very strange, odd coming out of left field sort of thing but uh uh oh yeah talking tina <laughs> living doll this is the if you if you've seen living doll yet uh, if you haven't no spoilers but it is the forerunner to uh child's play old chucky if you ever wonder where the, uh, the idea for chucky right there uh old man in the cave yeah uncle simon yeah probe seven over and out yeah uh seven is made up uh yeah oh you already saw it okay yeah that's exactly what i thought <laughs> About Chucky. It, it, the first time I saw it, I was a little kid, man. And Telly Savalas, you know, Telly was always a tough guy. But, yeah, that that one really creeped me out. That one definitely cre creeped me out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Short Drink from a Certain. Yeah, that one. Uh, 90 Years Without Slumber. Uh, Raining Grill. You Drive. None. We're kind of hitting a time where they're kind of running out of stories. And, you know, number 12 looks just like me. is pretty good. But if... If you've seen that one, uh, after you've seen that one, look up on Saturday Night Live. They actually did a parody of that sketch with Pamela Anderson. And it's actually really funny. Uh, Black Leather Jackets, that's a bit of a miss. Uh, let's see. Night Call is pretty good. Uh, for Magnus with Love, uh, uh, Spur of the Moment. Yeah, and there's their current style, Creek Bridge. It was already amazing they have made so good scripts on that scale. Truly, because they were doing them weekly, right? I mean, it's not like today where they would like just do it and, and you know, like for months and months and months and have them banked, right? They were just banging this stuff out, man. I mean, it's just the fact that they created so much content so good so fast is just profound. Um, the Mask is okay. Uh, Queen of the Nile, pretty predictable, I think. Um, but like I said, we're coming into the final season. Uh, Sigmund Freud was brilliant. Oh, <laughs> you like that one? Uh, I Am the Night. I Am the Night is pretty good. Uh, Sounds of Silence. Yeah. Caesar and Me was a little strange. Uh, once again, that uh, sort of harks back to almost a little Chucky like. Um, uh, Jackie Cooper was my first introduction to seeing him. Uh, Jeopardy Room. Wow, with uh, uh, Space 1999. Uh, Martin Landau, right? Oh, I love Space 1999. Uh, Supper of a Quiet Town, good. Uh, the Encounter with a very young Sulu. 
Some security in the graves. Uh, let's see. Come wander with us. That one's pretty good. The fear. Eh. Yeah, and the bewitching pool. Uh, bewitching, bewitching pools, eh, no. That's, unfortunately, a pretty weak one as well. But anyways, um, I'll probably come back to that series a lot during the rest of my life. <laughs> I do. I mean, well, like I said, I've been watching these things. I have it on DVD, but you can see all the little red lines, right? So you see that I've gone back too. So if it's one of those things that I got nothing much to watch uh, on a lunch break, I will just bust out a Twilight Zone, you know, and just give it enough time and, and come back fresh. But yeah, same thing, man. Yeah, there's not many shows. Uh, when I was younger, I would rewatch a lot of stuff, but there's not much I rewatch. Uh, Predestination. Um, is that the one with, wait, wait, with, oh, shoot, uh, Stand By Me? Uh, not Stand By Me. I mean, uh, um, shoot. Uh, don't tell me. Um, Predestination is, um, shoot, where's my brain? Dead Poets Society. Uh, Ethan Hawke. Uh, is that Ethan Hawke one? Uh, predestination. Okay. Yeah, I did. Uh, I like the idea of it. I'm not sure if it totally pulls it off. But yeah, obviously no spoilers. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I know what you're talking about. And... I think I sort of came up with it where they were going with it too early, you know? So that's always a frustration for me. If, uh, I, I love the movies where they set me up and I, I go, okay, this is what's going to happen. And then it plays out and I'm totally wrong. Right. I love, those are my favorites, man. Those are absolute my favorites, right? When they completely just completely pawn me and it's just like, I go, oh crap. I never saw that coming. Right. But yeah, that one, not so much. But yeah, I did. I saw that one. Um, I rented it on Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, I was <laughs> I was much trained by the Twilight Zone. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, my early days, Twilight Zone and uh, Night Gallery, uh, which was Rod Serling's follow-up series, which was more like uh, monsters and that kind of stuff, and less about the the big twist. But uh, yeah, absolutely, Twilight Zone and Outer Limits stuff for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> That's 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 true you know and it, it definitely the stuff that i've done right in terms of my storytelling uh i've been pretty good about trying to put twists in there probably a little too much i think at some points all right how are you gonna do oh no right in the dirt sorry man i was watching and i just jinxed you back in 120 <sighs> sorry man let's see all right so what was i gonna check here one last thing Oh, about Braid, the game. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to fix the lighting. Um, yeah. I think I, I mentioned this before, but this might be new to you. Actually, I, I went to... Um, my mind was <laughs> was wow. <laughs> um, I actually saw Braid back in 1997? No, no. Sorry. No, that was too early. Uh, 2000... Oh, no, no. It was 2003? I think it was 2003. Oh, dude, you're having a bad streak there. Sorry, man. Uh, the any game, uh, the IGF, right? And it was uh, Braid. Um, oh, there's a couple of games that were... Uh, Nobacular Drop, which went on to become Portal, right? So I got to play these games like in their early state, right? And the Braid at the time was uh, not the Braid that's got released. I mean, it was a lot more... Uh, programmer art at the time but the mechanic was still there right the ga the gameplay mechanic was there you know but uh yeah I, I played it and um it was it was fun at the time but it's definitely with all the graphical art stuff that's really what kind of put it over the edge I think it's a tough game too I think that's a really hard game okay so let's go ahead and tweak the lighting a little bit here. The nice thing is since he's in every scene individually, I can tweak the lights for each environment right uh, below. I liked how they integrated the story with the mechanics. Yeah, I agree too. It, it didn't feel like glommed on. It, it definitely felt like part of what was going on for sure. So let's knock it down to there like so. Let's try that. Let's see what that gets us. There you go. That's not bad. Um, I think we can still... Okay. 
let's get on top the light above. Let's make that a oh, it's prefab. Fine, we'll switch it. There. So the above light, let's go ahead and get that a little brighter. Like so. Maybe go a little bluer. Like so. Let's see what that does for us. I mean, this is minutiae kind of stuff, but it's been bugging me. That's kind of cool. Because and what I want to do is also kind of like what I did the underground, right? Is because the lava is still rising. So I'm going to do that, that bit where I uh, sort of emphasize the, the ground underneath and, you know, have that illuminate like I do uh, with the underground environment. So we still have that orange kind of cast coming from under here, right? But, um, and then now it's kind of the blue on top there. You know, and I'll probably go back and recorrect the characters as well. Why am I collecting gems? Okay. Let's focus. Okay, so we're good there. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back into here. All right, so what's the best way to come at this? I guess we just do it in here. Uh, let's drop our grid back in. Nice. You're on a roll again. So we need one like this. So let's grab this guy. Like so. Uh, just to play it safe, we'll go ahead. We, we have the the tile pieces to burn here. Hey, <laughs> you're determined, aren't you? <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's funny because that, uh, the real Penny, uh, she gets all excited when she knows it's time to go outside and, and do that, but the the issue is the fact that we're in Vegas, which means that our temperatures are now up in the three, triple digit range Fahrenheit wise, right? So it's uh, it's, it's playing Braveheart's theme in my head. <laughs> but yeah, when it gets to summertime, uh, she'll do it, you know, but after like 20 tosses, she's kind of like panting and kind of, you know, I'm done. I think I'm ready to go inside now. But she's funny. She'll let me know when she's tired. And what she'll do is see how she brings the, see, she brings the fishery back here, right? She brings it to you. But when she's done, what she'll do is she'll run up and she'll stop short right where the grass and the, the cement meets. And then she'll kind of turn and just walk a little bit and drop the, the frisbee right there on the grass and then turn and face me. That's her way of kind of going, we're done. We're, we're done. So, and then I'll go over and start to pick up the disc. And by the time I'm there, she's, she's behind me. She's in the door and back inside drinking water and kind of panting like crazy but I keep trying to tell her you know she doesn't under, understand I keep telling her wait till it's cooler out you know but yeah yeah she's not gonna understand that dogs are the best yep they are our kids for sure we definitely treat them as such all right so what I do is I just paint an edge there so any Photoshop guys out there can tell me if you got another workaround trick for this, but this is the way I always do it. Oh, did I just do it in the wrong one? Let's see. I did. Let me undo that. You're doing the right one, like so. So I can lock it into the corner because I this is like a subset. It's not that full edge. So if I do that, I can at least lock it in so I can make sure I put it in the right place. Let's just do it this way. Oh, shoot. That's the wrong one. All right. Let's back up. Let's do the right side. And let's shrink this down. Like 10. Do it that way. 
<laughs> Definitely giving you points for determination, man. Really? I thought I had... Oh, jerk. Brush. I thought I had the right one selected. Right layer. All right, try this again. All right. Tell me if you think he's due for uh, if she's due for a miss, and I'll go ahead and take one for the team for if you want. Boom! Nice. One sixty. Oops. Yeah, I hate that. That's a Photoshop thing where uh, because it's doing it like and using the graphics card. So sometimes you'll see a, a, a space on the grid. And you think that you've put it wrong and it's just like, no, that's just Photoshop being Photoshop. Like here, I, it's too small to see on the screen there, but there's a slight gap there. If I zoom in, no, there's no gap. Just a trick. Yep. Oh, give it a second. It'll come back. Let's go edit, transform, vertical, slot that back down. Uh, you're happy to be a front end developer now? <laughs> no, no, no Photoshop anymore. Yeah. For the most part, I like it. There's just little issues here and there that, you know, and the worst part is they may have fixed it, right? But I'm not upgrading because, you know, I, I've paid. I own the full version, and CS6 is fine. So I don't feel like rebuying the same program over and over again. All right, so I just need the one because I can flop it both ways, right? Let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, that is correct. Okay, let me just be doing a mental checklist there. All right, let's throw it in. All right. Now we're going to find the stupid thing. Uh, hello. What for you no update? Uh, okay, what happened there? Oh, I just got out of Photoshop before. And there, okay, there's another Photoshop thing. Why is it when you save it as PNGs and it saves the disk, it takes an absolute eternity? It's sort of like if you're not going to use PSDs, Photoshop wants to punish you and just kind of sit there. All right, so let's try this again. There, now we got that. And he is tile number 208. Wait, we'll drop them in like right there. And I don't think that's the same one anymore. So let's go assets, tiles, jungle, tiles palette, save there. All right. All right, let's get ourselves to that first test level. Underground. Oops. Wait, wait, what? Wait, why did you know? Really? Okay, so I just moved up to uh, 2019 3 and apparently I now have a conflict um, grid nudge forward was uh, perform selected oh you can do that every time fine wait what Why is it, wait, wait, why does it keep asking me 
Why won't it rebind? Oh, this is stupid. There. Rebind. Perform. What the hell? No, it's grid painting flip Y. Resolve conflict. Really? Now I have no no connections. Jesus, this <laughs> Why do you give a menu shortcut conflict and you don't actually work? Unity, you're so broken. Look at this. I want it to be this one. Rebind to selected command. Perform selected. No active profile. Oh. What the hell? Why do I have no active profile? That's a another bug. Hey. Well, now it's working. <laughs> All right. Oh, I got to get rid of that paint in the corner. Where was that? Over here. Unity, you're so broken. I remember that uh, Rick and Morty episode. <laughs> there he goes. They do. I hate to. I hate to bag on Unity, but I gotta. It. It, it seems like a lot of times they'll create stuff. But sort of like a young kid with an ADD issue that they just sort of ping pong away from it, you know. Um, they have so I mean like they're they're doing uh, ERP right, Universal Render Piper Pipeline, an HD Render Pipeline, and they're dumping the standard. But then both ERP and HD are still missing a ton of features, right? So they're gonna sunset the standard even before they have the other stuff working correctly. And I'm using standard. I, I ERP had too many issues, right? I had too many, too much of a bad time trying to get stuff to work, so I just gave up on it and went back to standard. And, I mean, to be honest, I just I think you can pretty much do as much as you can in standard as you can in ERP. Uh, I mean, some Uni Super Pro out there can prove otherwise, but at least from my experiences, I don't see enough of a separation between that. <laughs> as a problem in all software warehouses. It's like we gotta, yeah, we gotta justify the paycheck. So we gotta keep doing stuff. All right, assets, images, jungle. There. So let's fix that little dot edge. Saving done, and it should go away. Go away. Done. Uh, managers pushing new features and programmers wanting uh, to refactor old things. Sounds about right. There we go. It's looking prettier. Yeah, so now I got that edge fixed. You can see I have a version that allows me to, in case there's one that kind of overlaps like that, I can make them work that way. So let me do a version also where it comes down. And this connects, so I could do it that if I need to do that. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. And I mean, I didn't really do much in terms of new art. I just kind of recycled what uh, Daniel had created for me um, with the existing stuff. <clears throat> just kind of recycle the vines and just repurposed them. But yeah, that's looking pretty cool. It's pretty good though. Thanks. Thanks. So um, let me ask you, so since you're here, so the little stump sticking up like that, does that look confusing at all? Or is that, I mean, does it make sense that you can go through that without taking any damage? Or does that sort of like give you a sense of, you know, I have to jump over it? I mean, I think once you hit it, hopefully it, it you get the sense of, okay, I see the vine attached to it, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to hit it. Why did it get dark again? To fix that. 
All right, let's bail out of the prefab. Let's go back. It doesn't make me worried about getting hit. Good, okay. Yeah, I, I think even the first time you do it, right? It's the first time you go through it, you sort of pick up at the fact that, oh, I get it. Okay, that just, I can go through that, got it. We'll try that. It's looking a little dark there. That's better. Yeah, I like that. But it gives me the impression it would, uh, I would use it for something. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's it's less, I mean, obviously you have the ability to jump, so you don't need it yourself. But it, it definitely, to me, what I wanted, as I talked about before, is the testers were having issues where they couldn't predict where the ape was going to go, right? Because he would jump off of ledges and jump far away. So I figured if we have these little vines, it's no longer a mystery. You always know, okay, he's going to go from there down to there, right? You know, and with the jump, it always felt unnatural if he jumped straight down. So I always had to give myself enough room for him to jump and land, right? So that's actually, ultimately, that's what it's going to be is once I get some new animations in there, you know, once I get this fully implemented, right, you'll see him instead of doing the jumping stuff, it'll just be slide down, quick climb up, right? The same speed, but just with a different new animation, but a lot less ambiguity, right? That's the key factor. All right. So let's go back into Photoshop. So we're good here. So let's make ourselves another one. There you go. Where are you at now? Oh, 2.30. Holy crap. Last time I looked, you're at like 160, and you're up to 230. Are you due for a, a miss? Do I need to take one for the team to help you out? Just say the word, man. Getting there. <laughs> Next stop, 600. <clears throat> All right. So I got that one. I got that one. And what I need. Let's see. One with the edge with the corner. This guy. Here he is. What's up, buddy? Oops. Let me get the right layer selected. Nice. Jeez, man. Truly in a roll. Uh oh. It'll come back. Don't worry, she'll hold together. Come on, baby, hold together. All right. Let me close him. Don't need him. I need him. Dropped him in here. Let's see. All right, got my back up. Good thing I did that. Because now, do this guy. He goes away, he goes away. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's work on magic and get this one integrated. So you can see I'm just recycling uh, just the, the tile pieces and I'm just doing a little Photoshop magic to, to blend them together. And simplest ways, I drop this down so I can kind of see where I'm trying to go here. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, a little too much here. There we go. Alright. And first thing I do is paint that little chunk out. I was doing that on the other ones as well. Let me shrink this down. Let this be a little more refined. <laughs> if you want, I could just like leave 
leave it up like leave a stream up with just the uh, I'm away but I'll be back eventually and just let you you know let Penny play 24 7 Let's do it that way. Oops. No, it has to be fair play. <laughs> you gotta feel like you're earning it, right? Okay. Two eighty, jeez, man. <laughs> Call it a day at three hundred. Sounds good. Don't want to jinx you, but <laughs> oh, you're dangerously close already. <laughs> so where does that put you? Wow, look at that! Right in the middle of the list there. My boob is about to get bumped. My boob was playing it like crazy while he was hanging around, but uh, yeah, then he, he changed his username, so then he sort of like couldn't add to his score anymore. Do you want me to take one? Take a shot at it here? You gotta be close to a miss at this point, right? Nope, okay. <laughs> No, see, that was it. No, that's terrible. I should have left that alone. And I should have more on dues. Nostradamus bot games? <laughs> what the heck is that? Let's see. There you go. Back up to 280. <laughs> oh, got it. Yeah. Well, I'm just working off statistics, right? It's 80% hit rate. So there's, you know, one out of five that it should miss. So when there hasn't been a miss in a while, I always get paranoid. It's time. My yeah, I'm doing it right. Yeah. Smudge. There you go. Two ninety. Right there, knocking on the door. Uh oh. The big moment. There it is. The big 300. This is Sparta. <laughs> Alright, good. So we got this one looking pretty good. Um. So what we'll do is just take this, edit, transform, vert. Congrats on hitting a big 300. There you go. All right. So 
that's him. Yeah. So let me just merge these two together. Merge. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's just paint here in the corner. Well, like so. There. Let's move. Let's go new. All right, let's toss it in here. Uh-oh, starting to run out of a little bit of space here. Just put it over here. Let's see, so we need three, that's not gonna fit there. All right, <laughs> Vinny, <laughs> you got you got your, your big achievement, so you're done. All right, man, have yourself a fantastic weekend. Vinny, thanks for hanging out, buddy. Hopefully see you sometime next week. Have a good weekend. Oh, and have fun watching the Twilight Zone, of course. Thanks, man. You have a nice day as well. Let's see. Yeah. That's going to be that. All right. Um, actually, I don't really need... Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I need that. Okay, I'll leave this. I won't push my luck. I'll just keep this as is. Like that. All right, that's good. Yeah, I guess I can leave that for the time being. Let's see, two, three, four, that's three. Won't fit there. Yeah, okay, I won't fuss with it. I'll just leave this as is. Oh, you know what? I don't really... Wait, come to think of it, don't really need some of this stuff. Let me think this through for a second here. Got that covered above, so I can nuke that. Nuke that. That's just for the edge. That's all I care about there. And here, I don't really need any of that. Oops. So I think I might be able to sneak this in there after all. Two one at a time. Yeah. All right. That's good. Let's clean this crud out. Cool. All right. And what I'm doing here is I'm burning the edges. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to use those. And actually, I should put this like so. Because if I don't do this, uh, Unity is imperfect in terms of its tile edges. So if you don't do this, you'll sometimes get some funky either gaps or dark lines and that kind of stuff. So you gotta sort of like burn one of the, the ones in between. That's what I've personally found. And I've tried it with, I mean, like doing point, I've tried it doing it uh, as clipped, repeated, all that kind of stuff. And it really doesn't seem to help. The only thing that really addresses it is if you just burn the edges and just use that as a buffer. So let's go vertical. There, and then 
because I don't want this edge. This is what I'm talking about. Like that edge will sometimes show up on this one, even though it shouldn't, because you see it's within that range, but it it just seems to be imperfect in its tools. Good. And I got the edge on that one, got the edge on that, and you know what? I'll just go ahead and Ah, who cares? That's all garbage anyways. All right, save that. Let's go PNG. So it's images, jungle. All right, it's back over here. It's going to think for a second. Here it is. All right. So let's figure out which guy this is here. So we got that done. We need this one and this one. So that is 225, 226. these guys and I'll put them right there because I can all right let's add it whoa why does that have a collider box on it Okay, that was just, I guess it was just a, a glitch because he should have absolutely no collider whatsoever. He doesn't? Okay, good. Uh, I could actually add a composite collider. Make it static. And used by effector. Oops. Oh, wrong thing. Collider. That's what we want. Used by composite. There. So, rigid body. Okay, but in doing so. Do I just make it impossible to go through that? I might have to turn that off. Nope, we're good. All right, good. So let's put the right place, right part in place here. Good, just snaps right in. Look at that, fits like a glove. That's awesome. That's perfect. So that fixes that. So it might be all the edges that we have to worry about. That one. Um, I do have that little super pointy edge, but I think I'm just gonna let that slide. Um, Cause that, that was causing problems anyways, in terms of like the thickness. So I think I'll just keep this one. But look at that. Ooh, it's off by one, looks like. All right, let's fix that. Oops, we got to back up. Oh, shoot. Really? No. Let's see. All right, it looks like it's already against the edge. It is. Well, that kind of sucks. Hmm. So the the issue I'm facing here, and this is like total nitpick, but it's it's missing by one edge here, right? By pixel, but I'm out of stuff there. OK, 
Okay, let's unmerge everything. Yeah. Okay, we'll try this then. Wait, where's my handle for trying to stretch it out? What the heck? Okay, let's see if that makes it happier. Merge visible, copy, undo that. All right. Oh, let's bump it over here. There, so that's, oh, that's still, oh crap, it's not gonna fix the fact that actually that's off too, so that's a stupid idea. Let me kill that, that's not what we need. What I need is to clone that edge right there, I think. Let's do it that way. Yeah, there. That'll buy us the one pixel we need. And we'll, there you go. Clamp that all down. Merge those. There. Save. All right, that should get us there. Merge visible. Try this again. So now it should look like it's sliding over one pixel, which it is. Good. Let's get rid of all of the other excess we don't care about. All right. Clone, flip, flop. Finish saving and wait for that to get incorporated. There we go. All right, so where is that coming from? I don't see it there. Yeah, so it's not there, but it's here. Um, oh, I must have this, oh, I think I got, oh, I know what it is. Because I'm doing, yeah, I'm painting in the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, that was stupid. Oh, the tile map editor, man, you gotta careful, you gotta be really careful with the tile map editor because it likes to change layers on you all the time. So you find yourself painting on the wrong layer, which is what I just did. So let's go um, background and let's just momentarily switch it to lighting so it gets way up in the front. Oh, it's okay. Okay. All right. So this is whom? Oh, vines. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, no, we don't want that on vines. That's our, that's our issue there. We want it on foreground. There it goes. Now the little thing's gone. All right, we definitely got to work out the physics for it. Yeah, you see, <laughs> it's guess at the physics. The colliders are way out there. So let's go ahead and address that, and then it'll be good to go. Let's go back into images, jungle. Custom physics. We'll just start generate and then we'll do our classic 20 again. 20 count. That seems excessive for some reason. All right, we'll see. Yeah, hell, even if we just get like ballparked, we can at least get it in the neighborhood and find out how close or far we are, and then just adjust that. Yeah, so I'm just kind of more guessing now. Apply. Let's see how far off I am. Close that. Take out a maximize. And then let's see if we refresh it. There it goes. I like that trick. Hey, look at that. I'm dead on. So 20 was correct. How about here? No. Okay, we're off on this one. This one, two, just three. How about over here? Get that one correct, and we're too high by one. We were way closer than I thought I'd be. All right. Let's physics shape. Oh, I hate that. got to be really careful with the tiles too when you're first coming into it trying to select something. Sometimes it thinks you're trying to drag it and it'll move it. All right. I think that's close. All right, we'll find out. Hit apply. So now we should have the the left edge one working perfectly. And we'll check the right edge here. This used to keep me for the longest time because I would I click on it and I would see having no effect and I go, "Oh, I screwed it up." And I go back and keep tweaking, not realizing that it just does not like to refresh. You have to turn it off, turn it on, and now boom, you see it's actually perfect. You got to be careful of that one because you'll make all you'll make endless changes and not have an effect until you realize that it's just not refreshing. All right. So let's just get out of the way here like so. And like that and like that. All right. Let's see how this one is. All right, we're off by one there. That one's actually perfect. That one's perfect. Wow, we're only, we're only missed by one. That's pretty good. 
Allez. I hate that. I'm just trying to scroll and it's moving stuff around. All right, apply. Come on. Ooh, wait, actually that's, I'm now looking at the, the stuff there. That looks totally wrong. Oh shoot, I might have to do a totally different piece there. Oh crap. I'm just mirroring it, but I don't think I can mirror it there. I think that's gonna be totally off. I think I have to use the actual piece. It is different, oh crap. Oh, that might be true for these as well. Let's see. All right, so that's broken at the moment. Good job. That's yeah, blending okay. Okay, so that one mirrors nicely. But this one, not so much. Yeah, that's kind of obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. All right. Well, we just gotta swap it. That's all. All right. Merge layers. We did that. Okay. Good. Save. So then, what we gotta do is. Grab this bad boy, flop him, and drop him in. Copy. Paste. Okay. Oh. It's going to cut that off, so... Hi. Yeah. Close, but no cigar. All right. So tell you what, let's just kill that outright, and we'll just recycle this bottom piece. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good enough. All right, how does this... Oh, but we got to fix this now. <laughs> Shoot. Mm. I wonder if we flop this. Nope. It looks terrible. Never mind. Thought I'd try it. All right. That's won't take long. Just kind of spruce this up a little bit. Yeah, so that little hump right there kind of ties it in nicely. All right. So let's go ahead and merge, copy, unmerge. Yeah. New paste. All 
Alright, so this is one we gotta replace. Paste. Alright, let's get him above. Get rid of this. We don't need it. We don't need it. Ah. Yep, that feels right. Cool. Yep, it connects correctly. Good. Save. Export. And this hopefully will snap into place correct. Eh, kind of. Looks like we're off by one. Hmm. Okay. Let's just tighten it up by one. Come on, get there. Yes, there it is. The magic one pixel. All right, so let's get rid of that crap. So now we got both sides covered pretty well. Good. I think that'll do it for the vines. I think that's there. All right, so I got half an hour left. I think what I may do is just start working the other levels that I have built and just implementing the vines. Uh, 30 minutes isn't enough time to start doing anything meaningful with the ape, unfortunately, in terms of like getting the, the revised approach. So let's just do that. Let's give this a quick test. Go maximize. Come here, buddy. All right. And this is the way we'd actually play the, the game legitimately. Just let him do his thing. There you go. And then let's take him out. Now that he's cleared the way for us. Oh, too high of a jump there. Bad move. All right, check this side, make sure we're all good. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he's gonna come all the way around. I keep doing that. <laughs> That's a good trap. I like that. You gotta be mindful. There, can't double jump off that. Yep. 
easy enough to to miss if you're paying attention but if you're just kind of cruising through there yep you're gonna slam right into that I like that cool all right I think it's looking pretty good I think the vines are good I think that's a thumbs up yeah and I was concerned initially about these vines sort of being mistaken for the poisonous vines but I think it's kind of obvious because just the the very look of them and the thickness and the fact that it's missing the spikes so I think I can get away with that um, it still blends in the motif which is good that was the key thing I was thinking about but there you go but the key thing is now you can look at a level and instantly know where the ape can and can't go right you'll be able to sort of get a sense of okay he's gonna go from here to here right obviously if he's doing that he's gonna jump down jump across go slide 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 that kind of thing yeah yeah I like that so then the vine rests straight across oh that's right he's gonna fix that too I forgot I need to do one where the vine comes in so let me add that one all right tell you what I'm gonna duck out to a quick break come back and I'll add that one last little component and I think all of the uh, the new vine stuff will be set and good to go all right hang tight guys I'll be right back All right, guys, I'm back. All right, yep, double checking the mic works. I haven't had that problem lately. Uh, I don't think you guys remember if you've been around a while. I've had issues where if I mute it, come back, the mic, I have to like unplug, replug, but it's been behaving lately, so I won't jinx it. I'll just act like everything's normal. All right, so the last thing I want to try and bang out here before uh, the half hour mark finishes up is this bit right here right is making a connector so it goes into that so let's go right back into Photoshop one more time <clears throat> and let's see where we want to do this um, I guess let's see hmm now I kind of wish I hadn't jammed them all up in there Let's see, what do I want to do? I, you know, nah, I guess I'll just deal with these guys here. All right. Let's go. 
copy paste. Oh, let's not copy paste because we don't have a marker in the corner and we'll get screwed. So let's go ahead and put a marker in here. Good enough. Thank you, Photoshop. Who do I not care about? No. Need that. Yeah, I guess I can recycle that. Okay. There we go. care about let's get something underneath here and there all right so if we grab <laughs> missing jerk There he goes. All right. We'll drag this over here. And of course, he's underneath everything. Put him way on top. Like that. Like that. And. Go ahead and merge those two. Like that. Get rid of that crap. And let's go ahead and throw it way down at the bottom now. It's 26. Where is this guy? Right there. All right, chop this down a bit, just clean it up, clean that up, oops. Chop that down, all right, and then finally, vertical. Really? How is that possible? I have him selected, right? Just trying to delete. There it goes. Get rid of that. Go ahead and just do a little paint stuff in here. Just a little touch up here. We're gonna get really small brush here. There we go. All right. And let's add a shadow just to help sell this a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, stupid snapping edge here. Never 
Where's it going on top? Okay. There you go. Just a little bit to help sell that connection there. They're kind of dialed in. I think that's sufficient. Save. And we're thinking about it and we're done. Okay. Let that dig for a second. All right. Pick up jungle. Let's find that tile we just created. He is 196. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and drop him in. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oops. Nope, nope. All right. So, this right here is subtle. <laughs> Just that one little bit on top there. So now, if you do this one... There. <laughs> it's, it's so subtle. But hopefully it reads. Oh, I got little black spots I gotta clean up. Oh, shoot. Stupid physics. Oh, because I put it in the foreground, not in the tiles layer, and the uh, vines layer. That was my mistake. <clears throat> there. So let's switch to vines. Drop him where he should be, like so. There. <clears throat> That's why I was hitting because he was in the foreground layer, which does have a collider. Let's make Mr. Ape go away. Squished. Yeah. Alright, so that's what I was hoping for. So, um... Yeah, I mean, it's just subtle stuff, but it helps convey the fact that obviously you look at this and you can instantly tell that he can slide down here and then slide down there, right? And then so that way when he flips directions, that'll be anticipated because of just the nature of the, the vine. Then he comes to here and he can just jump over, slide down, slide down. And then, of course, climb up here, up to here. And that's good. I mean, it... it you know, it gives a sense of timing. It gives a sense of you know where he's going. So it's no surprise in which place he jumps to or climbs to. Cool. All right, let's clean up those little screw-ups. And I think we'd be good to go. I think that's it. Just that one. Talked about it before, but in case someone's checking this out for the first time, the reason I put these little blue dots in here is because of the way uh, Unity does the tile map stuff and assigns the numbers, right? So if you do this and you leave all these empty and then you want to go back, oops, sorry, I bumped the mic there, and then you want to go back and add more tiles, the issue is the fact that Unity will renumber everything and your numbers will all go off so all your tiles will suddenly be completely out of order and you have to rebuild all your work. 
So my solution is I just go ahead and throw a little dot in there so that way I know that it'll always be consistent and I can always just update as I go along and not have to worry about the, the numbers getting reordered and completely hosed. Because I've, oh dude, that was early, early days when I was learning that one the hard way. And then by the, the third time you have to rebuild all your levels, you're kind of going, yeah, I got to come up with something better than this. All right. So let me make sure I save that out. <clears throat> Let's go back to jungle. This guy. Done. Wait for it to finish saving. And now we should see the little black dots disappear after a second. Mm hmm bingo all right let's take one final look <clears throat> yeah cool it'd be obviously a lot cooler when the ape is using the vines and I definitely want to do another animation he does that that cool over the head both arm stomp move that it, okay see so it has one where he does the yell and the stomp but I I still want to add some more so it's not the same animation every time so um, yeah so the gist of it is if he's on the same level with you then he'll do a, a roar like here I come for you like here he'll do roar right but if he's lands somewhere and he's a totally different level he gets impatient and slams his fist down Whoa, whoops and if he gets too close, he sl slams your f his fist down into you. All right, we're good. So let's go ahead and add this stuff to the other levels. And physics-wise, we're all good. Cool. Let's go to levels, jungle. So yeah, I'm glad I chose to do this. I think it's going to, in the long run, it's going to make for a prettier looking game uh, in a... It makes more sense. Um, oh, so this would be interesting. I didn't think about this. Oh, crap. All right, so obviously this vine's going to have to change. Uh, replace it with a two, I guess. <clears throat> so let's do that. Oops. Wait, why are you not? Really? Uh, one of those should give me <laughs> the ability to... Really? You're being a jerk. Yeah, fine. It should be snapping, but it is just not. That's fine. 24. That should be correct. Yeah. All right. And I updated the prefab, but these apparently did not get the memo that the drop shadow is dropping to 166. What I did was I darkened the the drop shadow for the underground because it was just when I changed the lighting on there, it was looking a little too glowy. So I darkened it, but that kind of, the ripple effect is that affects all the others. So I have to just come in all the other levels and kind of adjust the alphas on all these bad boys. So they look more in the scene. I may have forgotten to do that to the glomer in the first scene. Have to double check that. Pretty simple fix. <clears throat> okay. So that's good now. So we are on top map foreground, right? So that's a good start. Like so. And now we got to do a new tile map layer. Let's go create tile map. And we'll call it vines. 
put right next to foreground switch it to platform and we'll just make it like negative 10 so we make sure that it's behind although it doesn't matter that was before when I was testing it but oh and of course we gotta make the scale back up to 1 because it likes to shrink down to 0.5 there <clears throat> so yeah, so he'll come to here and he'll jump across, and that should be pretty obvious. So he's not going to go from here all the way down to there, right? And it also makes it obvious he's never going to be able to jump all the way up there. And let me make sure that is the case. With my graph ways. Yeah. So here's the waypoints that he's able to tackle but this is as I mentioned on Wednesday this is the thing I'm trying to fix is when he jumps he can't jump straight down because it just looks wrong it just looks stupid the animation looks uh, he's just kind of jumping weird right so I had to make him space out but then here if he jumps out he's gonna jump right in the mouth so then I was like making him go further over and then it then it became unpredictable and some of the testers are complaining that I can't predict where the ape is going so then I bit the bullet and decided to go with this vine setup. And now I'm adding that, which I think is definitely an improvement, you know, which is a testament why game testing is so crucial. All right, let's switch back to that breakable foreground. Switch that one and that one. Cool, I like this. The art came off really nice. Happy with that. Oh, let's switch to. Oops, that's wrong. Let me. I gotta be careful and make sure that these components are put in the vines time map layer and not the foreground. Otherwise, it becomes an obstacle that the player can't get past. Alright, like that. Yeah, cool. I'm happy with this choice. I think this is going to greatly improve things. And just, I mean, visual aesthetics alone, but also just for the, the gameplay. Oh, and this one is kind of cool because we're going to change. Oops. Let's go foreground. It's this bad boy. Right. Switch to vines. If I can select it. Now we use this one. Oh, shoot. Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, crap. I have to do one for either side, apparently, because <laughs> I have the little vine sticking out on the wrong side. Oh, crap. Okay, so we got to do one more iteration of that, don't we? Mm, crap. All right. We'll do that in just a second. Let's just finish adding this stuff while we're here. Foreground. And then switch back to vines. Cool. Yeah, I mean, the more I'm playing with this, Nightfall, what up, buddy? Welcome. How's it going, man? So the more I play with this, the more I'm glad I chose to add these vines. I think this is going to be a really good addition. What's going on, TGIF, man? Hope you're doing okay. Welcome, welcome. I'm just implementing brand new vines into my game that uh, the little ape character will use to, to move from place to place. Right now he jumps and uh, kind of makes it a little hard to predict where he's going to go. So by adding these little vines, that will make it much more viable for the, uh, the player to understand what's happening. All right, so I'm going to just test this on a 2CL. Good evening. It's going well. Just got done fixing up some bugs. You know the standards. <laughs> cool. 
Yep. <clears throat> of course, it takes me longer. I, as I've said a million times, I am no coder. I am a total hack, a total fake. When I get on the art and animation side, I'm a lot happier just because I, I know I'm going to get... How's it going here? Good. I'll show you what I got going on here. Um, let's go ahead and hopefully this will behave. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So right now he's doing the old stuff, right? Where he, he jumps to follow you around, right? He's, he's jumping up and down. And some of my testers were basically complaining that they couldn't guess what was coming, right? Oops. I just took some damage there. So... I'm going to do these vines, so he'll actually come up and he'll climb up the vines and he'll slide down the vines, so then there'll be no question. You'll be able to completely guess where he is and isn't going to be going, right? That'll make it a lot more manageable. You know, and then when you're... The gist of it is that he crushes the vines, so if you get up in here, he'll try and get to you, and he'll, in the process, take out that vine for you, like so. Oh, crap. So like here is a perfect example where he's, if I stay here, he's going to jump like right into me. So, and that, that's just, that's bad. That's just bad design. So the vines are going to make that a lot more manageable. Like so. Yeah. All right. So this is just a test level. So obviously it's, it's not flopping correctly, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's good. That works. All right. So yeah, just starting to implement, uh, these new vines in all the levels that I've made for this section, which is not many right now. I only have what nine. There'll be a lot more of course, but I have to make adjustments as I go along too. This would be kind of interesting. Um, yeah, some of these levels I'm going to have to physically change. Wow. Because they work more for the jumping and less for the, the vines. So, hopefully I don't have to, like, radically change stuff. But, all right, I think I might come back to that one because that one's going to get messy. Let's find one a little easier. Yep. And then since i got to put the stumps in here... Um, I guess I could just do it with the vine on top of it. I wonder what that's going to look like. Let's let me adjust the shadow first, real quick. All right. Um, I do that for all these. Quick fix. As I mentioned, the shadow I darken it for the underground section because it was as dark as it's going to get and in the process it made it dark for all the other areas so I need to lighten it up for the others I have it set up in the prefab but these guys uh, are not be it they they lost their prefab status which is kind of annoying um, I was doing a trick where I have a built-in level editor and I drag the pre-made stuff into a new prefab and it seems that when I do that it loses its individual object prefabs I mean in theory that should give me nested prefabs but it just breaks it so as a result some of these guys have to go back in I either have to replace it with the prefab which is obnoxiously long-winded or just if I have to make a tweak I just go in and tweak like this and it's done all right so what I was going to find out is what does this look like if I just leave that vine and see we're foreground and that's this guy like so uh, weird nested prefabs should be supported yeah but what I'm doing is a strange thing here I'll, I'll illustrate a little bit better let me switch out so I made this little uh, quasi level editor right uh, yeah, sure. So this allows me to quickly build and test levels. Uh, does a tool instantiate and not link? Uh, yeah, it should. Uh, we'll take a look here. So let's see. So, uh, um, 
Let's see, we're underground platform. All right. Am I paused? I'm paused. There. Let's uh, clear. There. So we do that, and let's go ahead and throw in a glomer. And let's find him. Oh no, it's not actually. Look at that. So it's 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 not. So when I'm doing my instantiate. Okay, so how do I instantiate it and not lose the prefab status? That's a fantastic thing, because I'm using an instantiate call to bring him in. But as you can see, the blue's gone, right? So he's done in terms of instantiation, in terms of prefab, rather. Um, scripts. I'll do a quick look here. Once again, not a coder. <laughs> so this may not be pretty. Let's go into level editor. Instantiate. Uh, Running, I think it's Unity Editor Prefab Utility uh, or something. Uh, I'm not a big okay. So oh, that's something you have to do at the top here, like using oops. Uh, presets. It doesn't. Let's see. Is it Unity Engine? Nope. Let's see. Okay. Come out of there for a second. Uh, let's do it this way. Unity. Um, what did you say that was? Fab utility. I'm gigantic here. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Wrap anything that's editor specific. The game won't build. Okay. Uh, thanks for the heads up. Uh, using Unity Editor. Hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Um, edit, oh, so it's a Unity Editor thing, Prefab Utility. But, okay, so maybe because I'm bastardizing it, let me explain what I'm actually doing here. Because the way I'm doing this... Um, but, you know what? Actually, wait. Hold on. Uh, Glamour. Glamour Prefab. There. There. So I'm just doing a standard instantiate Glamour prefab call, right? So I'm doing that uh, only when one is requested, right? So for example, if you come in here, all right, make this a little bit bigger. There. All right. Do that, and then we'll drop a glomer here. See, at this point, should that glomer still stay blue, right? I mean, for example, if I go in prefab glomer, if I drag them in this way, oh no, it doesn't. Actually, so even drag and drop, and I drop it in here, it loses the blue. I guess I never paid attention. Uh, right, and since the game is running and it's instantiated during gameplay, I think it completely loses its link. And in-game prefabs are no longer instances. There you go. Okay. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> good. So, it was... The good news is it was not me doing anything wrong. The bad news is it's just the way Unity does it, right? It, if you instantiate a prefab, the prefab is no longer a prefab. Got it. Okay, which goes back to what I was doing here. Uh, jungle is it three I was looking at right yeah all right so that it's no big deal it's just one of those things that if I'm doing something specific I have to go in and uh, 
Oh shoot, but every time I reload it, is it gonna like break? Is it gonna, no, it shouldn't override it. If I go 166, right? Oh no, I was skipping this one. That's right, I was skipping this one because this one's nasty. So let's go back into four. There you go, yeah, so yeah, it, it retained my values. So it's no big deal. I mean, all it was was the shadow. Yep, to you, <laughs> yep, to you get it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Good, cool. Well, I feel validated that I wasn't doing anything stupid there. That is just, that. that is the way it does it, right? So that's cool. Um, all right, so what I was gonna check is I started to do this. So let's do that. Let me move this over a little bit, give myself a little more room. All right, so let's switch to a layer that I don't have yet. So let's go into grids. There you go. And let's go grid, 2D, tile map. We'll call this tile map. Underscore vines, like so. Uh, I, th I think you'd have to ha uh, save some sort of meta file which does the loads as the scene is loaded. Obviously, would require more work. Yeah, and I mean, it's... Um, but I imagine you're fine with this. <laughs> yeah, and because my level editor gets me about 75% of the way because I, I still have to go in and... Because I'm, I'm, I'm using my own custom rule tile and because the Unity rule tile... Uh, it's just a long story, but it's just not what I needed to be. So I wrote my own, and it gets me part of the way, but I still got to go in and clean the level up, you know, and do all kinds of tweaks anyways. So it's it's not that much of a burden either way. It's one of the things that I have to go back and clean the level anyways. So it's, it's not a big deal breaker for me. All right. So what I'm doing here is adding the... Oops, oops. I always do this. Let me put this back up. One... All right, stretch this out. All right, here's the big question mark. How does this vine look hiding behind the pulsing vine? All right, so let's check this out. For LC, let's go back into my scenes, jungle. And let me hard code this to the four. For LC. All right. Wait for it. Come on. All right. So this is mainly just a visual aesthetic kind of thing. So I'm adding these vines. But what I'm trying to find out is if that vine overlapping it is distracting or if it looks okay. I think it's okay. All right, I'm just getting rid of the ape so it doesn't get in my way here. And I'm collecting <laughs> collecting gems for absolutely no reason. Let me take this glamour out too. Done. All right. Yeah, so here's the question mark, right? This stump, right? Does this vine in the foreground sort of get muddled by this? Do I need to shrink this or does that look okay? I mean... My gut reaction is that I think it reads fine, but you know you can tell me otherwise if you think it's uh, a little muddled, muddled. I mean, what I can do is just shrink it. It's not that big a deal, but I'm going to have one on either side, so that vine's going to get really small. Let me go ahead and add the one to the other side and assess it at that point. Four. Yeah. Good. Cool. Thanks for the thumbs up. Cool, cool. It's good to have other opinions for sure. All right. <clears throat> so we are in foreground, like so. Yes. Then we go to vine, like so. Yes. All right. Oops. Let's get vines. <laughs> Let's move the vines up so they're not behind the background, that's bad. Let's put it flat, platform, negative 10. 
Sorry, buddy. I got to run, though. Uh, have a good stream. Good luck with the dev. Hopefully, I can catch a full stream sometime. That's right, man. I, I normally wrap at 4, so I'm overtime anyways. But, Nightfall, thanks for coming by, and thanks for the input, man. Uh, it's good to have someone that knows what the hell they're doing, uh, offering some thoughts, and especially when they say, yeah, you're not screwing up. So, that's that's very cool. Uh, thanks, man. Have yourself a fantastic weekend. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to finish up this little bit here, and then I will call it a day myself. But, yeah, thanks, man. Okay, good. Yeah. I think since the vine drapes off of the side, I don't think it gets lost by the larger vine there. Uh-oh. I keep forgetting to do that. Yeah, come here, buddy. <laughs> there he goes. Take it out. Thank you. Yeah, cool. I think I might live with that. And then, once again, I'm collecting gems for no reason. <laughs> Come here. And I'm squishing him for no reason, but that's just... God, that's gratifying. <laughs> yeah. And a crazy idea, if time is not an issue, would be to have something where the vines uh, sway when the ape is climbing them, but... That is a CBB on a dream list right there. But yeah, I'm liking this. I like the vines. I think that's going to work pretty well. Um, yeah, I think it reads nicely. Oh, well, you got the can, but you took damage in the process. So I'll keep dropping those in. And the next after that, of course, we'll be starting to play with uh, the ape actually using the vines instead of doing the jumping and the, the jumping up and down so i'll come next but not at the moment i'm gonna call it a day there uh normally i would have penny do her cameo but i think the wife has a poor penny locked up at the moment so sorry no penny cameo today sorry about that but we'll do it next week all right guys shut this down i'm gonna shut down myself uh you guys have yourselves a fantastic weekend um, as always, you can visit me on Discord, and I don't have the link handy, do I? Let me, uh, one sec. It's on there on the page, but just in case you're here. Alright, let's see. And I don't have it handy. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I've been doing this for how long, and I still suck? There we go. Yes. All right. So let me start start that spiel all over again. Um, yeah. There is my Discord channel. So if you would like to reach me outside of the streaming time, you can always hit me up on Discord. Please feel free to join my Discord server. Uh, I, I'm sociable on there. Um, it's not as active as I'd like to be. That's my fault. But I'll try and be on there as much as possible and adding interesting stuff. If I can find anything interesting to talk about. But otherwise, uh, I broadcast Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Adjust accordingly. Um, and yeah, just kind of plugging away. And I will be back on Monday uh, at 2 o'clock. So until then, hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And I will see you guys next week with hopefully more progress. All right? Take care. <laughs> One more. Start over. Take care, guys. See you next week. Adiós.